the great dominator of cycling today before the great legend of all time. A Grand Tours rider capable of winning in monuments versus the total cyclist. Is Tadej Pogacar the new Eddie Merckx? Then follow my wheel and I'll tell you. We know that it's a difficult comparison and above all, tremendously unfair. Two different eras separated by more than 40 years where the advancements and evolution of cycling has been bestial in every way. Today, the two-wheeled world is mega professionalized. Everything is measured to the millimeter, competition is fierce, and nothing is left to chance. On the other hand, Pogacar is a young rider with a promising future. However, we want to compare him with the greatest legend of the cycling universe, something that very few cyclists can aspire to. In today's video, we will try to analyze both racers to make the most objective comparison possible so that you can leave in the comments your opinion about whether the Slovenian racer is the just successor of the cannibal. And if you like our topic today, don't forget to subscribe to help us keep bringing you stories like this. In any sport, we always try to compare emerging figures with great historical references. And of course, cycling wasn't gonna be an exception. Every young man who stands out is immediately compared to the great legends the next Maradona, the new Michael Jordan, and of course, Eddie Merck's successor. The search for the new idol also has its regional version. Abraham Olano could never shake off the heavy shadow of being the new Indurain, and Italy spent several years searching for Pantani's successor. There have been several cyclists during the last decades who have been called the new Merck's, a comparison that is only reserved for super-class racers, for the child prodigies of each generation. Obviously, they all end up losing to the Belgian. Jan Ulrich, Peter Sagan, we could say that this is the first point in favor of the Belgian. He's been the best. When we say the best, we mean that he's been the best in everything. Yes, in all the races he's participated in. In sprint, in the high mountains, against the clock, simply the best. However, the Slovenian is a different type of cyclist. Different from Ulrich, different from Sagan, different from all. An aggressive rider who proves to be capable of winning monuments and grand tours. He starts winning in February and finishes winning in October. Undoubtedly, of all we've seen, the worthiest successor of Merckx. To better understand this comparison, it's necessary to go back to the golden age of cycling, the 1970s. A cycling completely different from the current one, where the means were much inferior, the technology was primitive, and the large multinationals had not yet made their entry into the big peloton. It was at this time that Merckx developed his entire career, a rider that we're not going to discover now, with unimpressive track record, 525 total victories. Merckx is defined as the ideal prototype of the complete cyclist. He was a specialist as a roller, as a time trialist, as a climber, and as a sprinter. His superiority extended to both the big three-week rounds and the short one-day tests. But his nickname of The Cannibal came to him not only for his victories, but for his character. He fought every meter, sprinted on every banner, and never stopped pushing until the finish line. Whoever wanted to beat him had to sweat blood. His competitiveness was out of the ordinary. Slovenia's Tadej Pogacar is the new pearl of modern cycling. He excels, above all, as a climber and time trialist. He is also proven to be a very versatile rider, capable of winning monuments and grand tours. Like Merckx, we're facing a rider of character, who does not hesitate to attack when necessary, and who, on the bike, shows a sacrifice and a dedication out of the ordinary. To try to make the fairest comparison possible, let's analyze their careers before the age of 24. Both burst onto the cycling scene very young, causing a great impact. The Belgian, in his first season as a professional, was already able to win the Milan San Remo, while the Slovenian made himself well known in the 2019 Vuelta a España. At only 20 years old, he was able to get on the podium at third and win two mountain stages, warning the world that we were facing a rider with a golden future. The young Pogacar's track record is incredible at this age. He's been able to win the Tour de France twice, the first in 2020, going back two minutes in the time trial of the penultimate day to his compatriot Primoz Roglic, which gives a sample of the Slovenian's combative spirit. In 2022, he was able to win his third tour, but an overconfidence of the Granon stage made him succumb to the jumbo team of Ingegaard. 
something that's surely pointed for future editions. The duel with the Danish rider will be exciting in 2023. One of the points that prevents an objective comparison is the calendars. Today, cyclists approach their year with the goal of just one Grand Tour. It wasn't like that before. Cyclists contested two, sometimes even all three Grand Tours during the same year. It will be difficult to see Pogacar contesting Giro and Tour or Tour and Vuelta during the same season. Merckx had, at the age of 24, a victory in the Tour and another in the Giro, his first major in 1968. At 25 years old, the Belgian won the Giro Tour double, something that nobody has achieved since Marco Pantani. Let's say it's a small dot in favor of Merckx. However, this also has another reading. Pogacar's rivals are cyclists who focus their preparation and their season on the single Grand Tour, which makes their rivals better prepared. This point could perhaps go to Pogacar. The latter is also relevant when we take the comparison in the terrain of classic races. For many years, it's difficult to see a Grand Tour's winner disputing the great spring classics due, first, to the fact that they are disputed in the pre-approval phase of the Grand Tours, so they don't usually arrive at an optimal time of preparation, and second, many do not have conditions for it. Pogacar, however, is beginning to break that mold. He's shown that he adapts well to the classics and his ambition and character lead him to play all the competitions in which he participates. It was many years since we saw a Tour de France winner compete for victory in monuments. The Slovenian has been able to win in the year 2022. This shows that we're facing a different cyclist, a climber to which his ambition, his desire, and above all, his speed tip makes him fit to win any competition in the cycling world. It's this characteristic that has made experts and amateurs venture into hateful comparisons. And I say hateful because any comparison with Merckx dwarfs the greatest. At Pogacar's age, Merckx had already won three Milan San Remos, one Liege, one Paris Roubaix, the Tour of Flanders, and the 1966 Road World Championship. Of course, he was already considered the best cyclist in the world, and the best was yet to come. Can Pogacar catch up with Merckx? It's hard to say, but it's a challenge Pogacar is surely willing to face. However, the bar is really high. Five victories in the Tour de France, five in the Giro d'Italia, one in the Vuelta a España, and no less than 19 monuments. Incredible. If Pogacar wants to equal the Belgian, he must win seven times in San Remo, three more Tour de France's, and more. An almost impossible challenge, but we're clear that if there is someone willing to try, it's Pogacar. We'll see what the future holds. In conclusion, if there's been any cyclist worthy of running as the relay of Eddie Merckx for the last 40 years, perhaps it's Tade Pogacar. However, to get to Merckx's numbers, he still has a long way to go. Do you believe he'll get there? Leave your opinions in the comments section down below. And if you want to continue enjoying the best racers of all time, don't miss this.